Hey everyone! In the last video in this series, I showed you how to get set up to record a pencil and paper video. Now in this video, I'll show you how to actually record it and how to do some basic editing using the software that's already in your smartphone. All right, well, let's get to it. The next thing you'll see is a view from my smartphone looking down on this piece of paper. Okay, so what you're seeing now is the view of the camera from my smartphone, which is locked into my smartphone holder right now. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have the entire paper within the field of view. And I also like to sort of make the edge of the field of view parallel with the piece of paper, just like that. Maybe turn it a little more. Okay, there, I think that's good enough. And that's just gonna make it a little easier when we edit the video later on. Now it's okay that these pieces of tape are showing because we're essentially going to crop this video to only include this area with the piece of paper in it. Okay, so now I'm just gonna demonstrate how I do this using the topic of chromosomes, since genetics is my thing, just to show you how I do it and kind of how this works. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've noticed that among students, there's a lot of confusion when trying to count chromosomes, chromatids, and DNA molecules during different parts of the cell cycle and during cell division. So I'd like to take a moment here and clear some of that confusion up. Now, most of the time, and we can look at what chromosomes look like most of the time, in other words, what chromosomes look like in non-dividing cells, most of the time, chromosomes don't actually look like what we're used to seeing them as. They're, they're very much decondensed and kind of spindly structures within the nucleus. So here's the cell membrane that I just drew, and here's a cell's nucleus. And this is a non-dividing cell. Now, most of the time, chromosomes really within the nucleus looks something like this. Not exactly what you're used to thinking of as a chromosome, is it? And we can draw another one over here as well. But this is a more accurate representation of what chromosomes look like in a non-dividing cell, and people have visualized this, and chromosomes essentially kind of just look like a blob in one part of the nucleus. Now here I've drawn two chromosomes. Here's one, here's the other, and these two separate chromosomes are two DNA molecules. Now these chromosomes are D condensed chromosomes. Decondensed chromosomes are just chromosomes where their DNA is very much just spread out around the nucleus of the cell. And there's very good reason for this. The DNA of chromosomes, when a cell is not dividing, in other words, during most of its life cycle, that DNA needs to be available and accessible to proteins that carry out transcription. In other words, those are the proteins that carry out gene expression and that are necessary for proteins that these genes on these chromosomes encode to be made. So that decondensation is necessary for the normal expression of a lot of genes. So that's why they're decondensed most of the time. Now, during cell division, chromosomes and their DNA get moved. So the reason that chromosomes package DNA like this into the chromosome structures that we're used to seeing is for the purpose of moving them into the two daughter cells. So it's basically to make them easier to move during cell division. And that's what we'll look at next. So let's look at what chromosomes look like during cell division, either during mitosis or meiosis. Okay, now early on in cell division, these decondensed chromosomes undergo condensation, resulting in 
this type of structure, a condensed chromosome. And these are the chromosomes that you're probably accustomed to seeing. And this chromosome, each chromosome at this point has a centromere, and this is one centromere. Okay, and we can do it for this chromosome too. Let's write in the other chromosome as well. So this is one chromosome, and this is another chromosome. So here in this picture, we have two chromosomes. And these two chromosomes are still two separate DNA molecules, and they always will be. Okay, now once chromosomes condense from a decondensed form into a condensed form, they are now known as chromatids. So this is one chromatid, and this is a second chromatid. So we see two chromatids in this picture. Okay, now here's the somewhat confusing part. When the cell reaches prophase of either mitosis or meiosis, these chromatids will have paired by then, forming a structure like this. So here's one chromatid, and here's another chromatid. Okay, and now these chromatids share one centromere. Okay. However, what we call this is different than what we call these. So even though this is still one chromatid and this is still a second chromatid, this entire structure is now known as one chromosome. So when chromatids pair like this, you go from having two chromosomes to one chromosome, even though the number of chromatids and the number of DNA molecules has not changed. So in this picture, we now have one chromosome, two DNA molecules, and two chromatids. So this structure is now considered a single chromosome. So try to keep this in mind when you encounter problems asking you to keep track of chromosomes, chromatids, and DNA molecules throughout the cell cycle and throughout cell division. Okay, so that's all I pretty much do. I just write on the piece of paper and talk. And having this laid out in advance helps me space this more nicely and makes it so that my writing isn't scrunched up on one side of the paper. So next I will show you how to do some basic editing of this pencil and paper video using your smartphone. So the next thing you'll see is the screen of my smartphone. Okay, so here you're just seeing the screen of my smartphone, and I happen to use an iPhone, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate on how to edit your pencil and paper video. So, first thing we want to do is go to the camera app, and the recently shot videos are going to be at the lower left here, so the most recent one is the one I want, so I'll tap that one. And you can use this to kind of just scroll around your video and take a look at it. And two things I want to do here to edit this video are to trim the beginning and the end of the video to delete any part of the video that I don't need the students to see. For example, just basically everything before I start talking and writing and everything in the video that's after I stop talking and writing. So I'm going to scroll around the video and see where that is. And for me, it's at about the four minute and 32nd point. So I want to delete everything before that point. So to do that, I use the edit tool right here, 
and I'm going to drag this leftward facing arrow all the way to the four minute and 30 second point or thereabouts, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing for the rightward facing arrow to delete everything that I want to at the end of the video, which is for this video, everything after the 12 minute and 15 second mark. So I'm going to drag the rightward facing arrow to the 12 minute and 15 second mark right about there, close enough, and then hit done. And I'm going to save my video as a new clip just in case I screw anything up, I want to preserve the original. So save video as new clip. Okay, so now that I've trimmed the ends of my video, now I want to crop my video. And to do that, once again, I'm going to hit edit and select the crop tool. And I can just with my finger, drag the crop tool so that the area of the video only encompasses the white piece of paper. So I'm going to drag this down to the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to drag up once again to the edge of the paper right about there. Then I'm going to drag downwards right about there. And then I'll drag upwards right about there. Okay, I think that's good enough, and then hit done. And this will take a few minutes for my phone to process. Fortunately, through the magic of video, we can just skip to the point where it's done. Okay, so now that I'm done editing my video, normally I would just watch the entire thing with sound just to make sure that it looks and sounds okay. I am gonna just quickly scroll through it just to make sure everything still looks decent, and it does. Okay, so when you're done with this on your end, make sure that you just watch the whole thing and listen to it, make sure it looks good, and then you can export it using that icon all the way in the lower left-hand corner of your phone and get the video onto your computer, and then you can share it with your students either through YouTube or perhaps a learning management system. Okay, so that's how you make a pencil and paper video. But remember, the person that does the work does the learning. So I strongly recommend that you require your students to write down everything that you're writing down on this piece of paper. And that's really one big advantage that a pencil and paper video has over something like just presenting PowerPoint slides over Zoom. The act of writing will keep your students engaged. And research has also shown that writing plus watching is much better for learning than just passively watching something by itself. So keep that in mind. Now, you also probably want your students to answer some questions based on what you're writing as well, and I suggest that those questions be formative in nature so your students can learn from their mistakes. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how to post your video to YouTube and a learning management system. See you all then.